Today we look at some relations between calculus and music. Uh, it's a basic fact that every song can be represented as a function. So this is the amplitude at time t, this is the amplitude. And uh, we can visualize this if you take an app, like a voice recording, recording app. And uh, let's, just, let's just sing a song. <clears throat> Low, the high, take high, the low, cross the line and square the low. <clears throat> so what we have here is I can uh, show you here the, the, the function. So I'm going to scale it so that it's a from interval from zero to one. So that's the that's the function, and we can we can now play this function. <clears throat> it's about it's about low, the high, take high, the low, cross the line and square the low. <clears throat> So that has been sampled, of course it's not the whole function which is stored, but it's sampled. A computer has only finitely many uh, data, so what it does is it, it, it samples it with 44,100 times uh, sampling points <coughs> per second. So that uh, is in these five seconds, this was about 200,000 points were were recorded here and then the function can be uh, reconstructed. Uh, we imported here just the song. There's actually two tracks. There's a left and right track and you see it orange and yellow. Uh, if you sample it, you sample it with 44,000 uh, points per second so that's a relatively large data set, 1.3 megabytes and then compressed in mp3 it's one 0.1 megabytes, but we can visualize this with Mathematica audio plot does that and uh, we can also uh, uh, draw parts of it just if you look at, at, at smaller parts of it we see more kind of how this function look, looks like <clears throat> so in general we actually only see the hull it's kind of these connections between the local maxima which uh, uh, which we see because that's that's that that function oscillates so many times. <clears throat> so here again we see this. We can also then access this data and and work with it. For example, make a statistics a histogram, make a smooth histogram, which is, gives us a PDF. So there are lots of relations between different topics. If we look at this function here, like for this recording. This is not actually the function, this is not the graph of the function we see. So it is something, there's something funny going on. Namely, this, this function is oscillating so many times, like for A, the lowest frequency which we had there, 440 times per second, until 4000 times per second, the highest tone in, on the piano. So that goes very, very, very kind of, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of oscillations, and we just still kind of draw it like that. So uh, what we actually see here, if you look at this, it's not the actual graph of the function, but it's what, what I would like to call the hull. So we just connect the successive maxima and we draw the hull function. So that's the hull. There's a funny thing happening in music that we listen logarithmically. So the scale, which we think is linear, like go from d d d d d, go up uh, fr one octave, that's actually the frequency is doubled here. And every step here is multiplication with uh, the 12th root of 2. <clears throat> so if we do that 12 times, we, we end up with a, with a factor 2. And so this is a encoded in what I call the MIDI function. So we have a relation between the frequency, so this is a, the frequency f, <coughs> frequency, <coughs> is uh, actually, I take the function which is the official MIDI function, and we have a MIDI number s, we get 440 times 2 to the uh, s minus 69 over 12. <coughs> so if we if we, if we, if we uh, listen to a, a, a sine function with that frequency, then we hear the, the tone. Uh, for example, if we, if we take s equal to 69, then we have just 440 hertz, which is the a. So that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the MIDI function. 
And then we can also solve, let's just write this down a little bit uh, more familiar with the exponential function. So that's e to the s minus 69 times log of 2, the natural log of 2 divided by 12. <coughs> So we can also uh, reword this and, and, and find uh, s as a function of s. So let's do that. So we get s is equal to, so we take f over 40, <coughs> the log of f over 440, f over 440, and we take the log, so then we get this, s minus 69, then we have to multiply by, we have to, uh, multiply by 12 over log 2 and then we have to add 69. So that's the MIDI number. And that's the frequency. I will demonstrate that. And uh, there is another place where calculus comes in naturally when we, when we study music. This is the relation between the scale, the music scale, and the frequency. And that's given by this function f of s, which I call the MIDI function. So it's 440 times 2 to the s minus 69 over 12, which is an exponential function. And uh, so for s equal to 69, we have 440 hertz, which means 440 times per second the, the, that os the oscillates. And uh, we see also that if we go uh, 12 steps up, that, that just multiplies the frequency by 2. So here we hear that kind of, that's, this is a, a scale which looks for us like a linear scale, but it's actually exponentially growing. It's an ex exponentially growing scale. So uh, this MIDI is a, is a, is a very nice uh, thing. It allows us to represent the song with very few data. So here I connected my piano to the computer and uh, it immediately just also writes the notes for it, etc. The great Leonard Euler was not only interested in calculus and math, he was also interested in music, and especially he wanted to quantify uh, ratios of frequencies. Some of them sound well, some of them don't sound well, and he, he assigned a number to it, which is a, a called the Grado Suavitatis. So A and B are integers, so this is just a this is just a fraction, like 5 over 12, we are just computing it afterwards. So this is a, a, a relation between a frequency relation. And what he does, he just uh, assigns to this a number, which is uh, uh, summing over all primes, uh, dividing a, b, and then he takes p minus 1. <coughs> I'll write this a little bit differently in the notes. Uh, so if a prime appears with, se with uh, several times, so we have to add it up here. So let me just uh, get, get the example here. So G5, 12. So we have to take a 60. That's 5 times 12. This is 60. So this is 5 times 3 times 2 times 2. So these are the prime factors. And so we take 1 plus, and then for the prime factor for 5, we have 5 minus 1. For the prime factor three plus three minus one, for the so two minus one, plus two minus one. <coughs> so in this case, it's one plus four is five plus two is seven, eight, nine. So this is equal to nine. Again, this is the twelve tone scale which we have on a piano, right? If you go from C to C to the next C, there are twelve steps, and you can ask yourself why twelve. We come to this, and uh, so here. So here we see a piano. <coughs> It starts with 27.5 Hz, there are 88 keys until 4186 Hz. So this is MIDI 21, MIDI 108. So uh, the reason, one of the reasons why this 12 is so good is uh, it's at uh, its frequencies, uh, the, the 12 root of 12 to the power k, they are very close to rational numbers and one can quantify this. For example, with a, a quantity which uh, Euler invented, it's called the Suavis uh, Gravitatis, which is a degree of sweetness. Uh, he just uh, quantified like these fractions. And uh, so uh, we will look at some examples in class, but uh, the, the, the Gratis Suavitatis of five over 12, for example, is one plus four plus two plus two plus one, because five times 1260 has these factors five, three, two, two. 
so you can uh, sort of gravis uh, suavitatis is nine. And it's an interesting uh, 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 function, you know, it's not obvious. So here we see the graph of P or A and B, the A and B is given, what is the value? So it changes pretty kind of in a strange way because there's a number theory. Uh, uh, some uh, some uh, ratios, uh, frequency, ratios, frequency ratios, which sound, which sound good, good, like two, two to one, this is two to one. Some fractions some sound, sound good, good. Some, some other fractions, fractions don't, sound don't sound so good. Sound so the Grado so Suave is part of this, is, uh, is bad for this ratio. Like Stockhausen, a, a, a musician, has even invented its own his own scale, five to the uh, power one, fifth root of five. <laughs> so uh, that's this uh, tone scale. It's a very strange tone scale. So there's kind of a reason why 12 is best. Uh, I kind of, kind of did uh, have here a formula which explains this, but maybe I explain this more in, in, in class. Another interesting re relation where calculus comes in is when we have the data point sample, we want to find the function back. This is the sampling function, and there's a theorem of uh, Nyquist, this Shannon, which tells that we have to sample about uh, twice as many points as the frequency we can hear, and our ear cannot hear higher than 20,000 uh, hertz, so 40,000 is a very good uh, sampling. Let's just take another uh, example. G, uh, Seven, seven, eleven. So there are only two primes here. So this is one plus six plus ten, which is seventeen. <coughs> so that's worse. It's a worse uh, relation. Uh, if we have g of uh, uh, one two, that's a very good uh, relation here. So this is just one plus one. This is two. So as lower as this degree is uh, degree of sweetness is, as better the the, the sound. Uh, uh, you know, appears to your ear.